Hey, this is Mrs. Reichelt, and we are moving into the contraction of skeletal muscle. Now, just before we start, I want to just make sure that we are all on the same page, that if we're still talking about muscle fibers, we are still in a microscopic view of a, um, each muscle. So we're still talking about microscopic stuff. Um, so first of all, the muscle fiber contraction is either going to be all or none. What that means is it's either going to contract 100% or it's not going to contract at all. This does not the same thing as um, partially um, flexing your bicep muscle, okay? That's not the same thing. We're, again, on a microscopic level. So the muscle fiber contraction is either going to be all or none. Now, within a skeletal muscle, not all fibers may be stimulated during the same interval. Um, so what that means is maybe if you have, let's see, I'll draw a bunch of my little fibers here. Um, so if you have um, some sort of contraction, maybe only the first three are going to be stimulated at one interval. You don't have to have all of them, but within each fiber, so if we had five different fibers here, the muscle contraction for each fiber is either going to be 100% or zero, but you can, the muscle um, fibers are either going to be, they can be stimulated at different um, types of intervals, so just be aware of that. Um, so then different combinations of muscle fiber contractions can give different types of responses. These responses are known as graded responses. So graded responses are the different degrees of skeletal muscle shortening. So that means that we're still talking about those myosin and actin subunits. And for each fiber, they're either, so for the fiber themselves, it's either going to be 100%, they're going to contract, or they're not going to contract at all. Okay, but you have lots of these ones, okay? thousands, hundreds of thousands of these. So you get a graded response depending upon the degree of how many you're going to um, contract versus um, the frequency in which you're going to contract. So that's just kind of what we're talking about right here. Um, so the frequency, so you can change a graded response if you change the frequency of muscle stimulation, so that means if you're going to continuously um, stimulate the muscle, okay, that will give you some kind of res response. Also, you're going to change the response if, depending on the number of muscle cells. So if you're going to um, stimulate a whole bunch of them, then you'd have a different sort of look. Um, all right, so graded responses again, are just going to be um, the different ways that muscles can be stimulated, and they're based on two different things. You have the frequency, so that's the um, the amount of them, or the, um, the amount of time between each stimulation, and then the number, the actual number of muscle cells being stimulated at one time. Okay, so the first type of graded response and again, I just have to make sure we're all on the same page. This is all microscopic. Okay, so the microscopic view, we have one version of a greater response, which is a twitch. So this kind of a twitch is at a microscopic level, so that means that it's not the same thing that if you're sitting in your desk at school and all of a sudden your leg twitches. This isn't that, okay? This is a microscopic view of um, the different types of contraction that occur. So a twitch is a single brief contraction, but it's not a normal muscle function. So that means that if you get a twitch, then you're going to have a little contraction, and then it's going to relax, okay? And again, this is not the same thing if you your leg were to twitch, okay? So this is at a microscopic level. The next type is tetanus, and there's a couple different forms of tetanus that we're going to talk about. So tetanus is the summing of contractions. So this just means that you have one contraction 
So if this was our one contraction, it will be immediately followed by another contraction. So that means that it's not going to go back to the resting. Okay, it doesn't go back all the way down and then eventually go up again. Okay, it means that it's summing them. It's going to add the results of each one on. So if we were to continue this, we'd go up again and then up again. So that's tetanus. Um, so you have one contraction, which is immediately followed by another. And the muscles do not completely return to a resting state. And the effects, is, the effects are added or they're summed together. The next one here is we have unfused or incomplete tetanus. Okay, so unfused tetanus means that you have some relaxation, relaxation that occurs. So that means that from each one of these, you're going to have a little low. Okay, you're going to have a little bit of relaxation time, and then it's going to sum again, and then you're going to have a little bit. This is basically the exact same picture as the last one. Okay, so this is our unfused tetanus, because there's two types of tetanus. So this one's unfused. It looks just like the picture before, so if I go back, it looks just like that, except for we have more of them. Okay, so the within tetanus, there's two types of tetanus. You have unfused as the first one or incomplete tetanus. Okay, so the results are summed, but you're going to get a little bit of relaxation each time. The next type here is fused tetanus or complete tetanus. So this again is going to look, I guess, it's kind of weird that I picked a color that exactly matches these lines in the graph. Um, so fused tetanus is when we have no evidence of relaxation before the following contractions occur. So this means that the muscle is sustained in that, um, we're sustained in that contraction. So that means that you're going to continuously get each of these impulses and there's not going to be any kind of relaxation. And again, the other one was it looks sort of like this. This is what th was the unfused or the incomplete tetanus. And then this one is the full-on tetanus. Okay, so our last uh, little thing to talk about before we end um, is that muscles are going to respond to strong stimuli. So muscle force is going to depend upon the number of fibers that are stimulated. Okay, so you have the number of fibers. And remember, if we were talking about the graded response, graded responses are going to deal with the frequency and the number of muscles fiber, um, that are contracted. So muscle force depends on the number of muscle fibers stimulated. And more fibers that are contracting, the greater the tension. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, so that means the more you're going to contract, the more of those fibers, the greater your tension will be. And muscles can continue to contract unless they run out of energy. And our energy source, again, is ATP. So now that we're officially talking about energy and ATP, that means it's our next video is going to be on cell respiration.